What's up guys, welcome to Bullish Bets. On this channel, we cover all things related to stocks and investing. Today, we're going to go over basic methods we use to analyze a stock. It's come to a point where there's so much noise that you don't know what's the right way and what's the wrong way. There's so much information out there that you really don't know what to look at when finding a good company to invest in. People say watch for PE ratios, PEG ratios, dividend yield, price to book, current ratios, and so forth. But they don't really explain why. It's been made so complicated that it seems like you need three PhDs to do this correctly. But the basic premise for analyzing a company is very simple. And in this video, we're going to go back to the core fundamentals, which revolves around one question. Does the business I'm looking to invest in offer something people want to buy and will continue to buy in the future? So obviously to answer this question, we have to first know what products or service a business offers. Now, this might seem really rudimentary, but a lot of people don't do this when they're investing in stocks. They don't know what products or service it offers. They just buy it because people told them to. So what we like to do here is do some basic Google searches. We're going to use Apple in this example. If we go on Apple's website, we know what they do. They sell MacBooks, iPads, iPhones. They have watches. They have Apple TV, music, support. This gives you already gives you a better understanding of a company. You know, for example, if it's a company you never heard about, you can do this and you can learn a lot more. Another method we found very useful is going into the annual report of a company. So let's go on Apple's annual report. It's called the 10K. They do this every year to you know, inform investors about their company. So if we go on a 10K, they have different items. Usually the first item is the business. If we go on the business section of the 10K, it tells you everything about it. It tells you the products, company background, services, and so forth. If you go here, like I mentioned, like we found on the website, Apple offers iPhones, Macs, iPads, and so forth. They also offer services that we don't know about, like advertising, Apple Care, cloud services, digital content, payment services. These are a lot of things that aren't on the websites, but are on the 10K and gives you a good understanding of, and a full picture of what the company does. If a Apple just offered hardware like iPhones and MacBooks, then you're not accounting for a lot of the other services that Apple offers and you're missing out on how great the company is. The next thing we want to look at in terms of products and services is the economic moat. This is basically the strength that the company has in terms of products and services that will keep them first in terms in terms of the customer's mind when they want to buy a hardware. Let's say what makes Apple different in terms of iPhone versus a Samsung. You know, you want to do a little more research about that and why customers would want Apple products over Samsung products. And a, a good example of this is Apple has an ecosystem with great apps and great services around the Apple ecosystem in terms of Apple watches and so forth that only works within that ecosystem. So in the future, Apple products are going to continue to be bought because of their strength and economic moat that they created for themselves in terms of all the products and services they offer that are very great. So to further answer the question whether the business is going to offer something people want to buy and continue to buy in the future, we have to dig a little deeper into the management because those are the people running the business and holding the future of the company in their hands. We want to know this in terms of the fact of what the management's plans are in terms of the future. What's their focus? And what's their track record? And how they're going to do it? So you want to know if the management has plans in terms of grow. Are they looking to grow? Are they looking to increase profits? Are they looking to increase dividends? Do they have new business ventures that they have planned for the business in terms of products and services? This gives you a better understanding of what's going on. Further, you can do uh, more research on the management in terms of their track record, what they have done in the past. Have they done what they said they were going to do to give you a better understanding of the business future? For Apple, we, we know the CEO is Tim Cook. He's been with Apple for a long time. If you do some basic research, he has a good track record in terms of being strong in certain areas and having weaknesses in other areas. You know, it's been commonly known knowledge that Tim Cook is very good on the business end, but he's 
not very strong in creating sticky products. To further understand more the, about the management, you can dig deeper in terms of earnings reports and what the CEO says and or his or her views on where the company is going to go in the future. And this gives you a better understanding of where the focus is in terms of the management and what their goals are. After we've done some research in terms of products and services a business offers and dug a little deeper in terms of the management, we want to look at the financials. The way I like to see financials, it's pretty much a data record of proof that people are buying the products and services a business offers. We're going to only focus on a few things in terms of the financials. There's a, I know there's a lot more, but to keep it simple, we like to look at a few. We like to look at the revenue. This shows how many people are buying the products and service as of certain dates. So if we look at Apple in the year 2020, over 275 billion products and services were purchased from Apple. And the year before, 260. A year before that, 265 billion. We also want to keep in mind the growth. The growth shows that people like Apple's products and services. And the next thing we like to look at is the gross profit. Gross profit essentially is how much money Apple is making from selling products and services. We all know that it costs money to sell a product. Let's say if I'm selling a water bottle, it doesn't make sense for me to sell a water bo bottle at $1 if I bought it back at $2 or it cost me $2. And this is the same thing with the business. We want to ensure that we can get the highest gross margin possible. This basically shows that we want a company to make more money off its products and services. The next thing I like to talk about that others don't talk about much is revenue to selling general and administrative expense this shows how efficient a company is in terms of marketing their products and you know if you you spend a hundred million dollars in marketing and selling your product and only make 80 million dollars in terms of revenue that's not a good sign that means that the product isn't sticky enough and you're pretty much forcing your product down people's throat it's not something people want to buy and will continue to buy in the future but if you spend only $20 billion, like Apple, and you make $294 billion, that's a good sign. That means that Apple is building a strong brand and people like Apple's products and services and they're telling their friends about it and they're buying more Apple products and services, which is a good sign. So keep in mind of this ratio also. And the next thing we'd like to look at is the debt to asset ratio. The debt to asset ratio pretty much tells us, does Apple have enough money to continue their business, continue to sell their products and services in the future? If the debt is too great uh, versus the asset, that means in the future term, Apple might go out of business and they won't have products or services to sell in the future, which answers our question. Does the, does the company have a product or service? that people will want to buy in the future. If the company doesn't last long enough to exist, well, that's not something you want to invest in. In terms of financials also, we like to look at the EBITDA. The EBITDA is pretty much telling us after everything is spent in terms of rent, employees, market sales and marketing, how much money a company has left. If a company has money left, that means their overall operations is profitable and they're making money and in the future they can continue to grow their business and sell their products in the future if they have a negative ebitda for too long they're not going to be sustainable in the long term and that's not something you want to invest in so there are a whole other bunch of financial data that you can look at to create a narrative as to whether a company has potential to grow in terms of selling products and services they have potential to stay open for future sakes and so forth but we just want to cut it down to these basic basic financial key factors that explain more about the business after we've gotten proof that the company has products and services that people are buying and want to buy we want to look at the potential risk what are some risk factors a company's face in terms of operations in the future the best way to find risk for a business is back to the annual reports we go to risk factors that they have to state so if we go down the risk factors we can see some very key points that a lot of people can't come up with themselves you know they talk about covid risk economic condi conditions in terms of mater material adversely affected from a company's business you know, there's a whole bunch of risks that you can see that they put out there themselves and you can make a more educated decision if that's the type of risk you want to take 
uh, based off what you what you have seen in terms of the products and services they offer and their potential growth based off how they've grown in the past by looking at you know financial revenue growth and so forth you know this gives you a better understanding of what you're willing to take on in terms of risk. A lot of people don't take into account the risk of a company and only look at the upside. If you only do that, you can't make an accurate decision as to whether you should invest or not. Now, after we looked at everything in terms of products and services, management, financials, and potential risk, you're probably thinking, should I buy the stock now? Well, there's one last thing you should really worry about. Is the business fairly valued? A lot of people buying stocks look at the stock price. And personally, we feel the stock price doesn't really tell us anything about the business. And you shouldn't really look at the stock price. What really matters is the market cap. The market cap is the total value of the business. Of what people are willing to pay to own the business. So let's say there's two, biz two businesses. I own one and my friend owns a another. It's a lemonade stand. We both make $1.00 every year and someone comes up and tells us they want to buy our business i tell the potential buyer i want to sell my business for three dollars and my friend wants to sell his business for six dollars which company are you willing to buy as a buyer obviously my business who's only selling for three dollars so we really have to compare each business and their worth and how much they're making to really determine if it's a good buy right now and we have to take into account the future growth and everything we've talked about in terms of potential of a company but the premise is we don't want to overpay for business and buy uh, my friend's lemonade stand when you could buy my lemonade stand when it's cheaper so certain things we look at to determine whether it's fairly valued is look at the industry standards you want to compare a couple companies let's say apple you want to compare with samsung and competitors in, in terms of the space uh, but there's never really direct competitors you could just give a get a better feel in terms of the industry standards so we want to look at price to sales. So these ratios are used to compare across different companies. You want to ensure that the price to sales for Apple is lower than their competitor. Let's say Google, Samsung, and so forth. You also want to make sure that price to earnings is lower. Th that means that you're buying it for a lower, lower price. Like my lemonade stand, you know, my price to sales for the lemonade stand was three times and my friend who was selling for six dollars was six times so you want to buy companies at lower ratios so you're buying it at an undervalued rate so you don't overpay and in the future the value would correct to the average of both uh, my company and my friend's company in terms of lemonade stands and that's when you'll make money off your investment there's a lot of other ratios you should watch too in terms of you know enterprise value to ebitda uh, price to book and these are all multiples you want to keep an eye on when you compare to competitors and you want to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck essentially so all in all we looked at the company's products and services took a look at their management their financials and all the factors under that the risk and whether or not they're fairly valued like we said in the beginning you know this is a basic level analysis to give you a better deeper understanding of what you're buying and what you're investing in for the short term or the long term with so many great companies out there we hope these tips and you know basic understanding will help you when you're looking for your next stock let us know some ways you analyze your stock that you're going to buy next do you do your stocks do your stocks absolutely have to have something in order for you to buy them you know, certain ratios certain break even points and so forth let us know in the comments below that's it for this video thanks for watching and if you like our content please give us a thumbs up we use this as feedback as to whether we're making content worth watching stay tuned for the next one